Recently, I reviewed the P365 from Sig Sauer, and I thought that was a pretty good value and great fun gun. But that got me thinking, how cheap can you get a CO2 pistol for, and will it be any good? Hello and welcome to AAR On Air. Today it's time to check out the ultra low price CO2 pistol market and what there is. But I wanted to check out a really low price one and a really low price blowback option too. On the list today I have the less than £50 UK retail for the full kit Daisy Powerline 415 which even comes with three CO2 12 gram cartridges, 350 steel BBs and a pair of rather flash yellow tinted shooting glasses. And the blowback I have with me today is the compact dual fuel Gamo C15 which comes in at less than £85 UK retail. Surely at these prices these have got to be pretty rubbish. Or are they? Well, first up then, the how do they do it for that price, Daisy Powerline 415. I would say it's all plastic, but the trigger is metal. The rest is black polymer. This is very lightweight at 472 grams or 0.93 pounds. It is fairly large at approximately 220 millimeters long or 8.6 inches. So not really aimed for small hands such as young children. It is non blowback so the slide is fixed and for show along with the magazine release catch in the grip. The field stripping latch is actually the safety catch and it must be said it's pretty good and it's nice and solid with a definite click to it showing red dot when in fire mode. The safety does in fact make the trigger completely redundant. You could say the trigger is a two-stage item but the first stage is pretty short and almost redundant with the second stage doing all the work. Which of course is cycling the BBs and applying the hammer. So not surprisingly it's a little on the heavier side. But I must say I've had much heavier triggers in the past and this one is quite acceptable. Once in the second stage, it isn't notchy at all. It's just a smooth flow to release. In front of the trigger is even a small rail for lasers, etc. if you wish. And this probably wouldn't be a bad idea because the open sights are fixed front and rear and have a gap big enough to get the new Tesla Mega Factory down, which does make sighting more of guesswork than any real skill, which kind of makes the front fiber optic sight somewhat redundant. But we'll take a look at the target work later. My first reaction was to drop a magazine out of the bottom of the grip to load the BBs. Nope. They're loaded into the top of the slide that doesn't slide, that is. And this is so very easy. Slide the latch all the way forward, lock home, then load in the 21 BBs through the hole. Once you've loaded, return the spring, and that's how easy it is. So let's put some gas in here. It takes 12 gram CO2s, and as I've said, Three are supplied in the box to get you up and running. To load, pull the bottom off the grip and slot the CO2 into the grip from the front. Tighten up the screw, no need for hex keys to lose at a, at a later date. Return the bottom of the grip and you're now all set. Now they claim 495 feet per second, so it's a claim made by the manufacturer as far as I'm concerned. Must be chrono time then. To give this a chance, I thought I'd try several different types of BBs to check it out. First up, 
standard steel ones which saw a maximum of 478 feet per second which to be fair is pretty close to the claim from the start this is 2.83 foot pounds or 3.83 joules which is a surprisingly healthy figure for such a budget gun. So, plastic BBs then. Well, they saw 634 feet per second, which is pretty fast, and equates to 1.87 foot-pounds or 2.53 joules. No, not enough power for hunting before anybody asks. Finally, just to check them out to see if they work in the 415, the Dust Devils and they do and have a fairly healthy and respectable 485 feet per second as well quite a surprising result from this ultra budget gun okay so let's get this into the indoor range and see if i can try to line up the gorge like sights and hit anything usual 10 meter range here goes Well, a little high and a little wayward, but more than enough for a spot of plinking with your mates. Or you could, of course, more than double the cost and add a laser. But that, to me, does seem to be a bit daft. This is about fun, not pellet-on-pellet -pellet type accuracy. I must admit, when you first pick this up, you do think, oh dear. But after using it, that changes to a big grin and tin cans going all over the place. Oh, and you just have to wear those glasses. <laughs> but of course, there is no blowback on the 415, so let's now add another level of feel to this little budget challenge. Next up is the more expensive, but less than a good night out, Gamo C15 blowback. Dual fuel, all for less than £85 UK retail. This one has a totally different feel to it. Even though it is smaller at 175mm or about 6.75 inches, it does weigh in a much heavier than the 415, topping the scales at 769 grams or 1.69 pounds. It has a much more solid feel to it with a top metal slide and polymer bottom. Again, it has a metal trigger. Having shot lots and lots of CO2 pistols in my time, this initially has a more familiar quality feel to it and feels like a meaty item with a comfortable grip and shooting position to it. Years ago, I bought a Gamo PT-80 for me to use and to be able to be used by my girls as well. And this C-15 was a bit like coming home to a familiar pair of comfortable slippers. One interesting aside here, when I got the PT-80 back out to reminisce over, I noticed it had the price still on the box. Now the PT-80 is non-blowback and mostly plastic, and it was £65 20 plus years back, which shows just how competitively priced air guns have remained these days. And no, the C-15 isn't made in China before anyone suggests. Anyway, back to the walk around. The top slide is a heavy metal item with fixed and open front and rear sides with white dots to make things a little clearer. Sadly, again, the gap in the rear sights will be big enough to get the loser from a slimming competition through along with several of the other runners up. This too though has a bottom rail in front of the trigger for additional sighting aids if you wanted to go down that route. The safety is on the top left and is easily operated by right-handed shooters with their thumb. Though it is possible to do it left-handed it's not quite as easy. The safety still allows movement of the trigger, but prevents the hammer from striking home and firing. Again, nice and sure-footed with a good click to it. And an S for safe 
and a red dot and F for fire. Again, this is a two-stage trigger and the trigger does most of the work in rotating the eight-round magazine, which does make it a little heavier, but not too bad at all. The magazine is a dropout stick item with two rotating eight-round magazines on the top and the bottom. Now this has more than a passing resemblance to the Beretta PX4 stick. I did try it both ways, but they're not compatible, I'm afraid. The magazine is dual fuel, so to speak. <laughs> now, last time I called a gun dual fuel, I had a comment from Angry of Mayfair telling me at great length how the CO2 is the fuel, not the pellets or BBs. <laughs> <clears throat> well, this time he better write to Gamo because they stated it very clearly on the box, dual fuel. Loading these mags is really simple. Just drop in the fuel of your choice and rotate. Taking care that you put them in face forward with the symbol facing you. And yes, you can pretty much put what you want in these. And they don't seem to complain at all. Once you've shot one lot of eight, drop it out, turn it through 180 degrees, slot it back, and you're off again. The only downside of this system is there is no lock open after last shot. Spare mags, though, are really cheap if you want more. Loading the CO2 is also very simple. Pull off the bottom of the grip, drop in the 12 gram CO2, tighten the screw, and return the grip cover. The blowback action on this has a good level of power behind it and a nice kick. Of course, there could be a downside to this though, which may mean a lower level of pellet power. Well, they claim 430 feet per second, so let's get the chrono out again and see. Fresh CO2 fitted and a whole host of different fuels at the ready. Firstly, a standard 8.44 grain JSB. Well, that saw a maximum 298 feet per second, which is 1.66 foot pounds or 2.26 joules. Quite a long way short of the claimed figure. Could that blowback action be taking its toll? Lighter alloy pellets then, 5.56 grains saw a maximum 336 feet per second, which is 1.39 foot pounds or 1.89 joules. Still falling a little short though. Let's try some BBs, shall we? Normal steel to start with, not expecting much difference because these are the same weight as the alloy pellets we've already tried. Well, they saw a maximum of 332 feet per second, which is hardly surprising, I suppose. Final chance to try and achieve that claimed 430 feet per second figure was to use the plastic BBs, which did see a maximum of 508 feet per second. So, it will shoot over 430, but at a price. The power figure saw a maximum of 1.2 foot pounds or 1.62 joules using these ultra lightweight items. Still, we're not trying to bring down any wildebeest with this, are we? Just target and plinking fun. So it must be time to go back to the 10 metre indoor range again to see what this is capable of. Well, not too bad for a blowback gun, which does have a good kick to it. But you know what? I wanted to test this thing out with the BBs just to make sure I was doing the complete job. So here goes steel BBs this time.
<laughs> well, would you believe it? It's more accurate with BBs than pellets. Now, it could be I was getting used to it, and the more I was using it, the better I was becoming. But I think that's more than acceptable results, personally. Conclusion. You know what? I've been pleasantly surprised with these two. Combined, they only cost £130 UK, and for that, you would get two guns, three CO2s, ammo, and a pair of fancy glasses. Now, I'm not suggesting you buy both, but it shows just how much you can get for your money if you wanted to. The Daisy 415 is just a pack of fun and has you up and running for a bit of fun on your own or with family and friends and won't do that much damage to your bank balance. The Gamo is a little more serious and gives a better feel to it and a different experience overall, but still amazing value for money and great fun. Sadly, you're going to have to buy your own glasses with the Gamo but maybe get some darker ones for effect. <laughs> so, you can get a budget CO2 pistol, that is some good, and if the Gamo C15 lasts as long as my Gamo PT80 has, it's going to be with you for some time to come. That's it for today. Please leave your comments, dual fuel ones if you like, thumbs up if you've enjoyed it, subscribe, alarm bell, share, check the car tyre pressures, remember to pick the kids up from school, and for goodness sake, get your hair cut. <laughs> Thanks for watching. See you next time.